Okay, so today's the day that I am slowly making my dreams come true by flying to a place that I've always wanted to kind of go to. I wanted to live there for a year, but unfortunately, I can't yet. Here I am in Spain. So in this video, I wanted to talk about how to make your dreams kind of come true as I am slowly making my dreams come true by exploring Spain, the country that I've been wanting to live in for a very long time. But I'm gonna wait till I'm in the hotel to kind of go through this topic with you. And for now, here are some clips that I did throughout the days. In order to change something, you need to know where you are. You need to know what's going on in your life and you need to learn how to accept where you are without any judgment. So this is kind of where you try to learn what's making you happy or unhappy. If you're watching this video, I'm assuming that you are at some capacity, you're unhappy with your life and that's why you're trying to make a change. So being unhappy can actually be a good thing because that's a signal that you need some sort of change in your life. For example, I was so unhappy as an ER nurse during the pandemic that it prompted me to do different things. I started looking for ways to make money online and that led me to writing a blog, to becoming a freelance writer, and now doing YouTube. So if I was happy in my previous situation, I wouldn't have looked for other ways to grow. So being unhappy doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bad thing, but it's just a way to kind of listen to yourself and become more aware of what's going on in your current life right now. So you can actually use this unhappiness as a motivation to change. It kind of reminds me of this quote by Ayodi Awasuka where he says, you must find the purest form of being fed up. Make it hurt. You have to literally scream, I cannot fuck live like this anymore. So you want the experience to really be painful that whatever you do from this moment forward, it's just gonna get better. That's the kind of situation or experience that you want to be in so that you can actually keep moving forward. So really the first step is becoming aware of where you are right now, of who you are right now and accepting that you want to change or that you need some sort of change in your life so you can actually slowly make your dreams come true. Okay, so I know that's not how the saying goes. I know that it says, you know, it's about the journey, but I also think that it is about the direction of what you're kind of going towards. So, because no one really knows where they're going, and as much as you want to plan it, we don't really know whether we're going to like where we end up. So instead of kind of stressing about your destination or even the process, I think it's more important to figure out the direction that you're heading. So going back to my personal experience, as an emergency nurse, I knew that I was having some sort of crisis as to what was the next step that was going to be in my life, whether that's going to change an ER job or if I was going to go do masters or if I was going to do travel nursing. There were so many options and I knew that going back to masters or doing things that would advance my career wasn't going to make me happy because I knew that I didn't want to be in the healthcare profession forever, at least in the next 10 years, I knew I wasn't going to be there. So it didn't make sense to kind of do masters or do something along those lines where I would spend more money in advancing my career or education. So instead, I looked for different ways to kind of see what was going to fit me. On the other hand, there were other activities that excited me like creating content online, doing blogs, making YouTube videos, and all of the things that I was learning online was more exciting to kind of imagine. It was scary, but 
but it was also exciting. So even though I knew it was going to take a long time and it will take a long time to figure things out, it was more exciting for me. So I knew that that was the direction that I wanted to head to. And even though there's no security in terms of will I be successful in this or not, it's a risk that I'm willing to take just because the journey is more fun and also the direction is more fun and exciting at the same time. So if you are currently stuck in the current job that you have right now, I kind of invite you to see fast forward to five years from now. Where are you and what are you doing and are you happy with it? So see if you can imagine yourself five years from now doing the same thing that you're doing right now or even advancing yourself and see whether you're happy about that or what if you change the direction or the path that you're going in and what would happen five years from now if you took a completely different pathway and see how that would make you feel. I think this is a really good exercise for everyone to try out just to see how that would make you feel. And the thing is like you don't really know whether you're going to like the things that you choose until you actually choose them. So you can imagine as much as you want of how you would like all these things but at the end of the day there is really no better teacher than experience and all you can do is really try to experiment with all the things that you can do so that you can kind of live a fulfilling life. So really you have to learn how to listen to yourself and figure out what you enjoy doing and really do more of that. And if you choose to, you can choose to monetize your passion if you do want to make a living out of it or it can stay as a hobby. But as long as you're doing it in your free time or most of the time, then I think that's kind of also making your dreams come true in a way. So the next level you is the person achieving your dreams. So if your dream is to become a writer, that person is the one prioritizing her writing. And if your dream is to become an artist, the next level you as an artist is the one putting time and effort into becoming a better artist, whether they're busy or not, whether they have a full-time job or not. That next level person is you, but you just haven't met them yet. So how do you get to know this next level you? So there's there's a couple of ways that I would recommend that you do. One of them is meditating and second, you can start journaling about them and start reflecting on important questions that would kind of help you figure out who you are deep down and what you enjoy. So the first question is that if I didn't have any worries right now, what would I be doing? Two, what would my ideal perfect day look like if I didn't have any responsibilities in the world or if I had everything that I wanted. Three, what is something that really scares me but also excites me at the same time? So these are just like the very beginner level questions that you might have to ask yourself. Spend some time, a couple of hours to figure out or to really dig deep with these questions and it might give you some insight as to what is that next level you doing. And after you figure out what actions the next level you is doing, then you can slowly do these things. Okay, so once you have some sort of idea of where you want to go or who you want to become, then it's time to start taking actions. And taking action doesn't mean that you have to wake up and quit your job. Taking action can also mean waking up 30 minutes early before your work so that you can spend time writing or doing whatever that next level you is doing. It can mean that you're skipping lunch so that you can write on during your break. It can mean saying no to different parts parties or hanging out with friends and family so that you can spend that time doing whatever it is that you need to do in order to make your dreams slowly come true. That's exactly what I did during my lunch break when I was still working as a nurse. I only had 30 minutes and I would bring my iPad to the cafeteria and I would set up a 15 minute timer for me to write and that was enough for me to get the habit to get the momentum of writing every day and publishing over 100 articles on Medium 
and that really sped up the process of me becoming a freelance writer and getting paid for my writing and all that exciting things. When you take action, you slowly prioritize yourself even if it doesn't feel like it, even if there's no progress or results that's happening. It really is you telling kind of the universe that you are putting yourself first and that you are making your dreams come true because remember, no one cares about your dreams as much as you do. No, your friends don't care about your dreams. Your family don't care about your dreams. Nobody but yourself care about your dreams. So you have to learn how to set boundaries from other people, from all of the external distractions that's going on in your life to actually prioritize the things that you truly want to do. And this isn't about hustling. This is not about working until you're not in an unhealthy way. But this is more so learning how to prioritize the things that you want to happen in your life so that you can achieve your dreams because at the end of the day achieving your dreams means putting the effort and the work into making them come true you know if you want to become a youtuber you need to put on the effort to learn how to script how to film how to edit videos and actually publish your work you can't just wake up and dream that you want to become a youtuber without putting in the work it just doesn't work that way so figure out the habits and the systems and the boundaries that you need to do in order to make your dreams come true and one good book that I recommend when it comes to creating habits is really one of the most popular books right now it's called Atomic Habits by James Clear this book truly truly changed my life it got me my yoga habit my writing habit and now my YouTube habit and it's all because of this fundamental belief your habits shape your identity and your identity shapes your habits Okay, so sometimes the hardest part of all isn't actually taking action, but it's really figuring out what's holding you back. So in the self-help world, they usually call this the self-limiting belief, where they it's basically beliefs that you hold on to that are limiting you to kind of do the things that you need to do. Thinking that you're not good enough or that you are not special or you don't have a talent in order to go for the dreams that you truly want one is just one example of a limiting or not one but a few examples of those limiting beliefs so basically they're beliefs that don't really help you move forward in your life so for example I used to believe that I needed to know everything about becoming a freelance writer before I could be one as opposed to just starting it and then figuring out along the way so in the end that's kind of what I did I knew how to write on medium but I didn't know how to pitch to clients I didn't know how to get paid I didn't know how to price my writing I didn't know how to do any of these things but it turns out it's really easy to figure out by doing Google search talking to other more experienced freelance writer and even paying or finding a mentor whether that's paid or unpaid it just shows that I had this strong limiting belief when it comes to starting an online business and that can be the same thing for you whether you're trying to start a YouTube channel and thinking that you have nothing to say or that you don't know if people are gonna watch it and to be honest all of these are kind Kind of like just limiting beliefs that your brain tells you so that you actually don't move forward in your life so if you're wanting to do something and you have that sort of resistance figure out what's holding you back figure out the limiting beliefs that you have about yourself and see whether they're true or not so for example if you're saying that I'm scared of being on YouTube because I don't want my friends or family to judge me and just kind of see whether you can make that statement untrue so for example ask yourself how do I know that my friends and family will judge me and even if they did what would that mean at the end of the day no one really cares so and this is kind of really important work that you need to do so that you can actually keep moving forward towards your dreams without actually self-sabotaging yourself The previous point isn't actually the hardest part of all. I think what's even harder is trusting the process. Trusting the process means that you're building a foundation, trusting that your dreams will come true regardless of what happens, whether you know, you're know you struggling right now or not. So for example, if your dream is to become, let's say, a digital nomad and based on your research, you know that the steps to become a digital nomad includes one, learning a skill that you can kind of take online, two, getting paid for that skill 
chill so that you can work from anywhere in the world and three is really move abroad and work online which you know it's an oversimplification of the process but as simple as that sounds in terms of the process it can actually take weeks months if not years to get there right so if you follow this step by step maybe you'll get stuck in the first step where you're learning the skill for example if you choose writing or graphic design it can take you months and years to kind of figure out how do you become a graphic designer and how do you market yourself as a designer how do you get paid and you need to learn all these like tiny details that will hope that will slowly make you realize your dreams but there is a process so you need to learn how to trust that process and that means learning not to give up so even when things are hard having your own back and having a some sort of support system so that you can keep going through no matter what really part of the process and when you trust the process even if things are going slow you know that you're heading in the right direction and that is really a big part of making your dreams come true slowly and another thing is that you don't necessarily need to hustle you don't need to do things in so intensely you can if you choose to but I find that when you're doing things in a very intense way you sacrifice a lot of your physical mental emotional help along the way so there is another option where you can just kind of take things slow that is kind of what I'm doing I'm taking things slow with this whole YouTube thing especially so I'm just kind of showing you that that's kind of possible too so the most important thing is really figuring out what your there is and trusting that there is a process to get there and really learning that you, you'll get there no matter what no matter how fast or slow you'll go as long as you're trusting the process you'll get there you don't need everything figured out before you can enjoy your life. So one of the reasons why most people don't go for their dreams is that because they think that they have to have everything figured out before they can start or even kind of go for their dreams. For example, I thought that I would need to have a successful online business before I could come to Spain and yet here I am trying to kind of see if this place is even for me because I don't know and being here for five days now it just makes me feel like this is a place that I could see myself living. I don't know for how long but I like the vibe, I like the culture, I like that the people are nice, I like that it's kind of messy but also it reminds me of myself. Right? Right. like everything's messy it's confusing but it has a lot of character so I really like that in a place but I got here without having the condition of having a successful online business I already feel like I have a successful life because you know I have a good job and I am married to a really good husband and I'm young so I feel like this unattainable dream that I made up in my head is something so unnecessary that I was making myself suffer so my hope is that me showing that I could come here even though I don't have the successful business that I wanted to before I actually got here is to show you that you know you can enjoy life and you can make your dreams come true very slowly so I hope that you realize that the most important step in this whole making your dreams come true is really taking the very first step and then going from there trusting the process building a solid foundation with yourself and then trust that things will naturally unfold on its own I know it sounds very woo woo cliche and all that but maybe that is something that you need to hear right now because that's definitely something that I needed to hear when I was going through this whole process and I really hope that this video resonated with you and I hope that you be kind to yourself and you take it one day at a time.